Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father and from our living, resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the message this reading is one word from the gospel reading from St. Luke that you heard just a few moments ago. It's actually the first word of this text, the word but. Thus declares the word of God. Now this may not be the shortest sermon you've ever heard, but it certainly has the shortest text upon which it is based. One word of just three letters that begins today's gospel lesson, and which is found actually throughout the readings for this resurrection of our Lord's Sunday. Now, if you leave here today with nothing else from this glorious celebration of our Lord's resurrection, I hope that you will leave here knowing that the message of Easter starts with the word, but. Now, this word is important because by all earthly reason, it doesn't belong where it is. Luke 23 really should be considered the end. The 23rd chapter of Luke tells us that Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. That's what St. Luke reports. And that really should have been the end of the story. Oh, sure, it's fine that St. Luke added a few details of how people mourned the loss of Jesus and how his body was prepared and entombed. But that really should have been the end. I mean, Jesus was not only dead then, but dead and buried. And everyone went back to their homes. Story was over. The story ends. And then all of a sudden, unexpectedly, is this surprising little word, but. But? There's a 24th chapter of St. Luke? I mean, what more could there be to add? What more is there to say? I mean, he's dead after all. This word doesn't seem to belong where it is, nor does the sentence which it begins, nor the paragraph which it begins. But comes into the text and heads must turn and eyes must widen and hearts must almost skip a beat. Because our Lord's story goes on after death and after entombment. But they found the stone rolled away. But when they went in the tomb, they did not find his body. But while they were frightened, the two men spoke to them and said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. It's interesting when Peter tells this story of Jesus' resurrection, this word pops up in his writing too. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day. Now, if you think of it, this little word, but, changes everything. It changes the story from one of gloom and despair to one of triumph and victory. It changes the story from one of death and mourning to one of life and joyous celebration. It changes the story completely. It makes all the difference in the world. Because this word but tells us the story of our Lord is not over at all. It did not end with his death and burial. And I want you to think for just a few moments what this one word meant to the women who went early to his tomb on that first Easter morning to finish the task of embalming his body. Now these women had seen Jesus breathe his last on Good Friday. They had watched the soldiers break the legs of the two thieves on either side of Jesus. They saw Jesus' side get pierced by a spear. They saw the blood and water which gushed forth from the wound. They'd helped wrap Jesus' body in linens packed with spices. And they'd helped lay his body in the tomb. And then on the third day, these women came back to the tomb with more spices to finish the job that time had prevented them from finishing on Friday. You see, the Sabbath day began at sundown on Friday, and they could not have contact with a dead body on the Sabbath day. 
So they hurriedly did what they could on Friday. But once the Sabbath day was over, very early Sunday morning then, they went to finish the job. Probably somewhere around between 3 and 6 in the morning, they headed for his tomb. But when they looked inside the tomb, the body wasn't there. But as they approached the tomb, the stone was rolled away. See how this word comes in and it changes things? But what a surprising word, an unexpected word, a joyous word, a hope-filled word. But the story of our Lord did not end with his death. For he is risen. All right, I caught a few of you uh, not uh, ready to go. So just remember, that could happen again. Fair warning. Yes, this one little word changes everything just the way this one day changes everything for us. Because Christ's victory over death is also our victory over death. His triumph is our triumph. Because he lives, you know the promise. We will live also. Just as the one word changes the story completely, the resurrection of our Lord changes our lives completely too. In fact, I think this little word now changes our lives just like it changed the story for Jesus. I mean, let's try it out. Let's try this one little word out as you deal with your heartaches or your disappointments or even as you deal with death, either anticipating your death or maybe the death of a loved one. Just try this little word out and see if in Christ Jesus that little word doesn't change everything for you too. Because here's the truth. Our God is a God full of surprises. And he does not always let things end the way we think they're going to end. In fact, let's try this word out right now. Let's try this word out when it comes to our sin and its consequences. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. And I'm no longer to be worthy to be called your child. Now those words don't just fit the prodigal son. Those words fit us too. I mean, we are, have sinned again and again and again. And we deserve to be eternally cut off from God. End of story. Or is it? But... But God shows his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but has eternal life. So our sin and the punishment we deserve is not the end of our story in Christ Jesus. Because we have forgiveness through his suffering, death, and resurrection. This little word, but, sure makes a difference when it comes to our sin. And let's try this word out when it comes to death in Christ Jesus. My grandfather passed away, and I really miss him. I think of him often, and quite honestly, there's a certain hole in my life that I don't think anything will ever fill. But, but he was a Christian. But he believed in Jesus Christ. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, this little word makes all the difference when it comes to death too. Because of this little word, because of Jesus Christ, death is not the end of our stories either. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we now know with certainty that we too will rise from the dead through our faith in him. Because his grave is, was empty, one day we know our graves will be empty too. Death may seem like the end to us sometimes, but in Christ Jesus, it's not the end. It's just the start of an even glorious new beginning. Actually, I am convinced this little word but can help in just about every area of our life thanks to Jesus. For example, I'm hurting, Father. The people around me make life so hard. They reject me and taunt me because of my relationship with you. But... But you love me and you accept me the way I am and you've promised to be with me always. Or, Father, I don't understand why this is happening to me. It doesn't seem fair somehow. It doesn't seem right. I mean, why me, God? 
but I know that you really do work all things together for good. But I know that you will use this according to your plan to, to build up your kingdom and to help me grow in my faith. But makes a difference once again. Or Father, I failed. All my glorious plans seem to have wound up as dust. But Father, I know that the value of my life is not found in having one's business succeed or marriage succeed. No, the value of life is found in having a relationship with you. You see, sometimes we need to put that little word but in whenever we start feeling like it's over or it's hopeless. That little word can make all the difference in the world thanks to the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. It's almost a magical word, if you would. A word that doesn't seem to fit in the story. A word that comes out of nowhere just when you think it's over. But comes along and changes everything. Just when you're going to give up and fall into despair, this little word comes along through the power of God's Holy Spirit and changes the mood. It changes everything. It comes and gives life and restores hope and makes everything new and wonderful again. Just when you think it's over, God comes along and sneaks this little word into our lives again in Christ Jesus. But Jesus cried out from the cross, Father, forgive them. But the stone was rolled away from the tomb, but the tomb was empty, but now Christ is risen, but now the righteous shall go to eternal life. What a word! And we're just scratching the surface of where this word sneaks in, the glorious good news of Jesus. What a wonderful God we have, a God who forgives our sin, a God who frees us from Satan, a God who saves our lives from the pit, a God who turns everything around, a God who gives life and hope and meaning and purpose to us, a, a God who takes away our sin, guilt, and condemnation and instead gives us in return out of the blue his love and his forgiveness and life eternal. All because of Jesus. And it seems to always involve this little word, but he is not here. He is risen. Uh, I warned you that was coming. Now I'm going to do it again. Okay. I, I want all of you at the same time. But he is risen. You know what, if, if, if I were going to come up with one word to convey the powerful truth of the resurrection of Jesus, there are many words that could do the job, quite honestly. I think hallelujah is a good word because it summarizes the joy we feel because Jesus Christ really did come back from the dead. The word resurrection explains the chief event that took place on this day. Victory or life might well explain what Easter means for us today. Yet this Easter, I want to suggest a different little word for us to consider as the Easter word. The word that starts our text for today, the word I've been talking about, the word but. I think this little word really does capture the surprising news of Easter. But he is not here. He is risen. Ah, all right, you were, you were paying attention this time, much better. Now, I want to tell you, some of you saw a devotional video that I did um, where I was walking around the cemetery and I commented on a couple of the engravings on the tombstones out there. Um, I do that quite a lot, actually. Um, by the way, I never realized somehow it took 26 years to realize there's a marker out there to mark the spot that the first church was built. Somehow I never noticed that before. So if you haven't ever noticed that, you get my attention and I'll show it to you sometime. But you know, when you look at a tombstone, there's a name, and then there's always two dates. One, the date that the person was born, and one, the date that the person died. A lot of times, that's all there is. I'm not satisfied with that. I think there should be something more. Now, in that video, I told you that what I wanted Denise to put on my tombstone was... Uh, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen, just as Christ said. But, you know, if you have to pay per word, I, I don't think we need to put all those words on then. 
But on the other hand, I do think we could put one extra word on. Right after it lists the day that I die, I want there to be a one three-letter word and three dots. But, dot, dot, dot. And if you read my tombstone sometime and you see that, then I want you to remember what it means. But he is not here either, thanks to Jesus, thanks to his resurrection from the dead. This Easter, then, I hope you'll remember this one little word that starts out our gospel reading for today and which shares with us the surprising good news of Easter. He is not here. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And I am convinced that little word makes all the difference in the world. But the stone was rolled away, but the tomb was empty, but he rose from the dead. Don't give up hope then, my friends. Just remember God's surprising little Easter word. The story's not over at all just because you think it's going to end. God will sneak a little butt in there for you too. In Christ, it's never over. Amen.